Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday podcast. It is really good to connect with you today. I want to welcome all of those on Facebook and watching this later on YouTube and many other different devices and ways to watch. Uh, again, just thankful, really thankful for technology in this season. Really thankful that you have made the decision to invest some time today yeah. in talking about kingdom stuff. I want to welcome to the podcast today, Jason Hooper from Sister Church down the street at Kingsway in Irondale. He and his, he and his wife, Tina, lead uh, that wonderful congregation. They've become friends of our house and friends of our family and uh, just excited to have him with us today. And Jason, we're going to talk about things prophetic. And I, I love it. I know. I love I know. it. And honestly, we just love being here. You know, you, you have those, those few people in your life that as soon as you start talking, whether it's on the phone or in person, you just feel this this revelatory well began to open up. And from the very first time we met, I remember even calling you on the way back from the beach. There's just been this, whenever I think about you, it draws something of the kingdom out of me. And so we're so thankful for this partnership and the connection that God has given us. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to talk about uh, today, uh, we spoke on the phone. Yeah. We're in a series called Unveil. I love it. That's the awesome. Un the unveiling. And uh, we know we're coming out of that passage in Romans chapter 8 where the Apostle Paul speaking to the church at Rome, a church that he hadn't been to yet, but a church that he's going to. He's unveiling this theological foundation yeah. of God's will and what God is doing as far as restoring all things. And he's really painting a picture of the world and uh, a groaning in the world, mm -hmm. a longing for the world to see the unveiling yes. of God's glorious sons and yes. daughters. And I love that picture so much. I told our congregation when we started this series, that really the, the world right now is longing for an unveiling. 100%. Not an unveiling of a new stimulus package. No. It's not the unveiling of a get back to work plan. Those things interest us and they interest the world, but it's not really what we're longing no. for. They're not the answer we're seeking. That's right. You know, the solution we need, of course, is greater than human reasoning. It's, it's the kingdom of God manifested through the people of God. That's right. And, you know, I love even when you mention unveiling, you know, the term revelation or to reveal just simply means to unveil. Yeah. And so even as we talk about all things prophetic, you know, there's revelation, interpretation, application. God is wanting to reveal to us that is going to cause us to come into a place of illumination. Yeah. A place of enlightenment. To we, we don't just hear what God is saying, but we can also understand what it is that he's speaking mm. and how to align our life with his heart in a way that reveals his character to the world around us. That's so good. That's so good. And so, yeah, we, we talked about, man, you know, it's because Paul, Paul talk, you know, before that he talks about suffering. Yeah. And how suffering is always an opportunity for the glory of God to be revealed there's a there's a revealing of glory that often comes through a season of suffering absolutely and I, I think everybody would agree that this is kind of a season in which the world is suffering this this pandemic there's there's a lot of people suffering in this moment but God often very often births and reveals something very beautiful from seasons of suffering absolutely. so this is really an opportunity for the church to um, to learn at least what it looks like to be unveiled. So in this series, we're kind of looking at characteristics of an unveiled church. Love it. And one of the first characteristics that we see in Scripture, uh, right after uh, Holy Spirit comes onto the scene and baptizes the apostles and the disciples in the upper room, Peter jumps out and says, hey, this is good news. This mm -hmm. is a fulfillment of prophecy. And the prophet Joel said that when this happens, it's going to trigger an unveiling and you're yes. going to see... Prophecy. He said one of the things that you're going to see in the church, the sons and daughters yeah. will prophesy. And so today I want to talk about prophecy with you. And I guess a leading question, let's start by just tell us in your opinion, as someone who operates heavy in the prophetic, your church operates heavy in the prophetic, what, what do you believe is one of the most important characteristics of, uh, of the unveiled church as it pertains to prophecy. So if I were to ask the question, what does a prophetic people or a prophetic church look like? How would you describe that? How would you paint that picture? That's, that's a great question. You know, and honestly, I think Jesus answered that question when Philip said, hey, we show us the Father? And he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Okay. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's good. And so if we are really walking in true prophetic ministry, then it's the spirit of prophecy that is connected to the testimony of Jesus, that is the revelation or the unveiling yeah. of the heart of the Father for us, mm -hmm. but also through us. Yeah. 
I mean, you talked about suffering too. I think I think that points to it because even when we look at times of suffering, you know, I think sometimes we can get focused on what's happening to us instead of what God is releasing through us. Mm. And I think a lot of what, what you know, I think the prophetic perspective we need to have, even in times of suffering, mm. is that this isn't this isn't something happening is happening to us. It's something that's happening for us. Mm. It's oppressing. Yeah. And it's it's allowing what's on the inside to come out. Good, bad, ugly. Yeah. And and so the beauty of that it says that when dross is removed from the silver, the silver is sent to the silversmith mm. to be made in a vessel fit for the king. Mm. And so I feel like there's a prophetic refinement that is happening right now. Mm. As a prophetic people, we have to always recognize that that everything that is happening around us is 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 really working out for us. We have to begin to say, okay, God, what is it that you see that I'm not seeing? Mm -hmm. And so if I was to just bring it together in a nutshell in terms of the DNA of a prophetic people, the divine nature of Abba, if you will, mm -hmm. it would be a people that regularly reveal the heart of the Father. Yep. They walk in the testimony of Jesus. They hear God, but they also are able to, um, to not just hear God, but to speak as God. And I think that sometimes, even when we hear about the prophetic, sometimes people hear about prophecy and they can think about like that old crooked finger coming, you know, yeah. like pointing out your sins. Oftentimes we've had people that may have had a prophetic gift, mm. but didn't have a prophetic spirit. Mm. Because I think that there's there's several several layers and dynamics, dimensions to the prophetic, if you will. There's the you may all prophesy, 1 Corinthians 14, 31, that, that every believer, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, it is evidence that you have heard God speak. Mm. Whether it's an impression, a thought, the audible voice of God, um, God moving upon your emotions in some sort of way. Mm. Um, and so, so there's the, the, the you may all prophesy. There's the gift of prophecy, which again, 1 Corinthians 12 says is available to all believers as the Spirit wills. There's the spirit of prophecy. That is the corporate. That's when God can begin to move upon a person or a people mm. that causes them to function outside of their past experience in God. Mm. And that's where I really feel like we're in a season right now. And then, of course, the office of prophet, yeah. which is more of the fivefold operation in, in terms of leadership to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Mm. But one of the things when you, when you talk about a prophetic people, I think it's not just about the person. I think it's about the atmosphere and the reality of heaven that surrounds that person's life and that they're known for. Mm. It said Saul came into the company of prophets and he was changed into another man. Yeah. And he began to prophesy. Yeah. And so DNA and true nature of prophetic people is not just what they can do with God or for God, it's the impact, the influence that what, what they have in God has on the world around them. Mm. And so I think to really understand a prophetic people, you also have to understand prophetic culture. And to recognize prophetic culture isn't just drawing prophetic people, but it's, it's, it's allowing light to come into dark places. Mm. You mentioned, of course, you know, the first fruit of outpouring in Acts chapter two, sons and daughters prophesy, yeah. okay? Young men see visions, old men see dreams. And so outpouring is multi-generational, but it's also, it's multi-gender. When I say gender, I say two, hallelujah. But it's, <laughs> it's guy and girl. And yeah. so one of the things that you begin to recognize is, number one, not only is God moving through people mm. of every age and every ethnicity, but he's also moving through every person. Yeah. And so one of the, one of the things I love about the gathering place and present day outpourings of the Holy Spirit is the whosoever will invitation. Mm -hmm. And that to me also is part of the, the prophetic nature is, is it doesn't look to exclude, but it looks to affirm. Mm -hmm. It looks to recognize. And in that people feel included in the family of God. And in that place, like Nathaniel, they say, wait a minute, I didn't believe, but now I believe because yeah. I've seen a people who walk in the ways of Jesus and reveal the heart of a God that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. You know, we had a um, a guest come in this weekend. Um, Michael French came in. Love Michael. And, yeah. And, and and talked to us about really, you know, one of the most important things about prophecy is hearing. Yeah. You know, like it's you know everybody can talk. Sure. Um, but you know the the really the the art of prophecy begins with attuning your ears to what heaven is saying and to mm -hmm. what the Lord is saying and. Uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, you and I talked a little bit on the phone about hearing and the importance of hearing. And, and we live in a culture that doesn't listen very well. You know, it's... Uh, it's People a, having a conversation with you while they're on their phone with somebody else. Yeah. yeah. And, and Michael even talked about this a little bit. He said, you know, I think we've all had conversations where you're talking, but they're not listening. You know they're not listening. And... Uh, and, and he, he said, you know, sometimes God feels that way. I'm yeah. sure God feels that way a lot. He's, wow. he's constantly trying to speak to us concerning things present, things past, and things to come. 
And really the art of relationship yes. and the root of relationship is the ability to hear. Yeah. Um, you know, Mark's gospel talks about how the word was released and when the word was received and heard, that's when Satan came against mm -hmm. those seeds. Yeah. Those seeds where people heard. And so talk to us a little bit about maybe, um, you know, talk to us a little bit about warfare, maybe in the sense of, you know, we, we do have an enemy that of course. I, I don't think our enemy minds us gathering in places where the word is released and where prophecy takes place. But I do think that he he gets really upset when people have ears to hear. Yeah. And we talked about Eli, uh, yeah. Elisha a little bit. Yeah. So maybe you want to talk about that. You know, and even when you're thinking, even when you're saying that, I was reminded of you know Isaiah and Isaiah six being sent to a people who, having ears to hear and eyes to see, would not hear and would not see. Mm. But then Jesus, you know, really echoing or repeating. You hate to say that Jesus ever echoed anything because he is the voice, he is the word. But referring to referencing that passage in Isaiah Matthew thirteen. When he says, you know, he said, blessed are your eyes for they see. Yeah. And blessed are your ears for they hear. Mm. And see, I, I, and one of the things we have to recognize is as believers, we have been unveiled. The yeah. scales have fallen. Yeah. Our ears have been unstopped. The evidence is like, so just the fact that you are a Christian and you're a believer shows that you have heard and you can see. Mm. It says in Matthew 13, 23, that he who has heard the word and understands the word mm. bears fruit. 30, 60, and 100-fold. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's hearing, the importance of hearing, and then there's also understanding. And I think that understanding is where a lot of the warfare comes in. Because mm. a lot of people can recognize that God is speaking. I think the interpretation and the different filters sometimes we adopt uh, create misunderstandings yeah. in us and therefore have created some misperceptions about God as we've misrepresented Him. Yeah. And so, you know, I think even when we talk about hearing, we also have to talk about seeing. You know, a great, you know, a great verse is Jeremiah 33, 3, when he says, call to me and I will show you a great mighty thing that you do not know. So God was wanting to speak through sight. Yeah. He was wanting him to see by what God said. And, and that would be the equivalent of me texting you and saying, hey, Matt, would you call me? Yeah. And then you calling me. Well, it actually would have, because I've got you on my phone, it would have been less effort to call you than to text you and invite you to reach out. Yeah. And I think that one of the things we have to recognize is that Jesus is the invitation to the church to reach out and not just touch a friend, mm. but to reach out and reciprocate to a father. That's good. That Jesus was the invitation mm. into relationship and that and really revealing the heart of the father and even ministering gifts and manifesting fruit isn't something we do, it's a byproduct of who we are as we walk in relationship with the Lord. And oftentimes warfare is actually working to separate us in the place of our connection and relationship. It's where our branch is connected to his vine. That's good. One of the things actually we shared even this past Sunday in, in our service was that most warfare is simply the enemy's attempt to get us to agree with the accused or the brethren. Mm. And oftentimes it's not about accusing others, it's about accusing self. Mm. It's about, you know, you know, God's not going to speak to me or I'm not worthy or he couldn't use me. It's all of that negative self-talk that so many, you know, have throughout the day. But a great example of being able to see what God is doing and, and to be able to hear in the midst of distraction is 2 Kings chapter 6. Mm. So, you know, we were talking about it earlier today. Here, you know, Elisha is like the, the, man of, the man of power for the hour. He's the super prophet. He can see and hear into the king's chambers. But he has a moment right now where he's like, you know, the Lord must have hid something from me. Mm. But at the same time, the king is feeling threatened because some of the activity he's engaged in. And so, you know, so Elisha and his servant, they're camping out. And overnight, everything changed. Mm. And a lot of the folks who are watching right now are in a season that, you know, everything was one way one day, mm. and overnight, everything changed. Yeah. And they woke up, and everything around them said something different than it had the day before. Wow. And so you have Elisha's servant who is just so, so honored with the privilege of being able to serve the Lord's work and his ministry to be connected to God's gift in the form of Elisha and to see influence and impact with kings and princes and all these things that are happening. And then all of a sudden, in one moment, he forgets everything he's seen. Mm. He forgets everything he's heard in God. And he looks out the window and he sees the enemy. Mm. He sees horses, he sees chariots, and, and in his eyes, they're surrounded. Mm. And I love what Elisha did. Elisha didn't say, come on, let's pray for breakthrough. He didn't say, let's pray for a miraculous deliverance. He, he, didn't, he didn't even, you know, sing a song. He prayed that his servant's eyes would be open to see. Okay. And I think so often, even in the prophetic, we're praying for God to move, 
because we've been blinded to the areas he's already been moving. Mm. And I think a lot of that has to do with distraction. Because the truth is, is when Elisha prayed for his servant, he said, I pray that your eyes would be open that you would see. And he saw that, he said, saw that yes, they were surrounded in a natural way but their enemy was surrounded in a supernatural way. Wow, that's good. So the horses and chariots that surrounded them were surrounded by horses and chariots of fire. Mm. And so when his eyes were open to see those who were with him and not just those who were against him, all of a sudden this guy is ready to run at hell with a water gun. I mean, he's right. he is filled with hope. He is filled with faith. And that is to be really the, the heart posture and even the position of the church, that, that we're, we're not distracted by what we see around us, because we're able to have faith in the character of God even when we can't see what he has said. So and I think a lot of people are in a valley right now between the place of what God has said mm. and what they see in the natural. Yeah. And in that place, it's like the valley of decision. It's like Psalm 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Listen, it ain't time to call a camp out, hallelujah. We're walking through, we're not camping out mm. because there is a table of relationship on the other side where he's gonna make our enemies watch us eat. And we're about to feast in the Lord's faithfulness in this season in a way that is going to so reveal the goodness of God Amen. for the glory of God to the world around us. It says actually in Hosea, in Hosea 2, that in the end days, people would tremble because of the goodness of God. Yeah. And I believe we're about to see such a demonstration of the goodness of God, it's going to cause men to tremble, and that's going to release harvest. Mm. So how do we position ourselves to see and to hear the goodness of God in the midst of what we see around us. Yeah. I think one, we have to recognize, um, you know, just like before our, before our radios could be, could be tuned in through a button, they were dialed in, yeah. you know? And I think that a degree of difference, a degree of difference or a degree of indifference can keep us from hearing and not just make it hard to hear, but can ultimately cause us to be hard of hearing to where we turn off the radio altogether. Yeah. We've all been in those, those cars where you just really couldn't get anything tuned in clearly, so you just turn the radio off altogether. Yeah. And I think some people, because of uh, indifference or a difference in what they're hearing, because there's so many different voices right now that are saying different things, and we can talk about that in a minute as well. I think some people have just said, well, I'm just going to not hear. Yeah. And then they're, they're forced to navigate the direction of their life through what they see mm. and not what he has said. Yeah. And so um, we were, I was sharing with you earlier that one of the, um, one of the, the, the medieval forms of torture back in France was what they called death by distraction. We call it being drawn and quartered. But they would tie, they would tie a horse to each of your four appendages, your, your arms and your legs, and they said, giddy up. Mm. And what they would do was they called it death by distraction, and it would pull a person in four different directions all at once. And this is a gruesome picture. You know, those of you who see your prophets, don't visualize it for too long, yeah. but it would tear that person into pieces. Mm. And what we have to recognize is, is the Lord said, when you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. Mm. The word worry means to divide your heart into pieces. And so there's been invitation through distraction to enter into worry in this past season. But if we will turn our worry into his worship, not only will we be delivered from distraction, but we're to come through seeing what he has said and yeah. saying what he sees. Yeah. And that is the invitation I believe to prophetic people right now. That's good, that's good. So for those that would categorize themselves uh, as, you know, hey, I, I want to become more prophetic. Yeah. I want to become a hearer, you know, uh, I want to be a person that learns to dial myself into yeah. the words of heaven. You know, what advice would you give them? You know, a lot of yeah. us have been walking in this for a while, some more than others. Sure. But for those out there today that would say, honestly, you know what? You're right. I, my heart has been divided. I've been listening. I've been listening to voices, maybe even in the spiritual, mm -hmm. that I should be listening yeah. to. So how can I become a person that's more attuned to God, how, what would you tell them? Yeah, I, th I think it also. I think really it starts with the Word of God. Okay. You know, and and one of the things we when we talk about the Word of God and talk about spending time in the Word, I think so many of us we began hearing that counsel mm. at an age where we were, we were being told to take out the trash, to do the dishes, to mow the grass, and it became another ought to. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, when people were like, "Wait a minute, I don't," you know, "I, I can take out the trash. Well, I won't. I got kids that can do the dishes." How do you know, like, <laughs> then all of a sudden they begin to abuse free will. Mm. And I think that some of what was a, a have to, a need to, or an ought to has been pushed aside as a, as a box that is checked instead of an invitation for encounter. That's good. You know, and, and so I think that as we begin to turn our have to's into get to's, mm. and we recognize the privilege we have in this book, 
Yeah. You know, that listen, and after 400 years of silence, God sent his son, mm. who is the word. Yeah. You know, God obviously has a lot to say when his name is the word. Yeah. And, he, and, and so the birth of Jesus ended a 400 year season of silence. Mm. And, and, and not only that, but Peter said this was our more sure word of prophecy. I think that number one, allowing a love for the word to, to be cultivated in your heart. Yeah. And whatever that looks like for those who are watching, you know, find, it, find a translation of the Bible that speaks to you. Yeah. You know, honestly, I used to have so much of a religious spirit. I'd be anti certain translations. And yeah. I was like a new King Jimmy guy and an occasional NAS and Amplify, <laughs> but don't talk to me about the nearly inspired version. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. But now I'm like, you know what? I love how the NIV communicates their passion. I love the NLT. I love the message. I really love the passion. Yeah. And so what I, what I began to recognize is wait a minute, whatever's going to draw us closer, whatever's going to draw us near to God, we need to have freedom to be able to hear in the way that we hear. Yeah. You know, um, I, it was funny, I, I was going back to, I, you know, I was doing a lot of work this morning and then w went to the house to change clothes for, for coming here. And I noticed my wife had put uh, Gary Chapman's five love language on my side of the bed. And I, I picked up the hint, hallelujah. <laughs> and because she, what she was saying is, hey, you can read some of this and you can start understanding how I hear love. Yeah. You know, because a lot of times we love others the way that we receive love from them. Mm. Well, I think the same thing is true in the prophetic, that we've got to recognize that God so loves us that he knows how we can receive love. And he's not limited to our church box, our religious ways of thinking. He thinks he speaks outside of the King James. Hallelujah. You know, and, mm. and for people to whatever it looks like for them to find their point of connection with God. I do think the word is foundation yeah. because without a well of the word, people get weird. Yeah. Because they can say that the Holy Spirit told them to do things that the Holy Spirit that go against God's word and the Holy yeah. Spirit is never going to contradict his word. I think other the other thing is. Is, is encouraging people to recognize what is a healthy routine, but also is a healthy rhythm for their life. Mm. Because oftentimes when people are under pressure, it becomes hard to hear. Mm. And, and if you don't have margin, either everything feels like God or nothing sounds like God. Yeah. And so I think, you know, I, I've got people in our church, like I'm thinking of one person in particular who hears from God in a beautiful way, but for many years did not think she was prophetic. Mm. And I remember her coming to my office one day and saying, Jason, I don't hear God. I was like, yes, you do. And I started giving some examples of how I have heard God through her. Mm. And, and, and the, the, the way of communication, the love language God has with her is creation. Mm. And when she gets around nature and she gets around creation, God as creator begins to speak to her through the trees and through the flowers. And so she comes up with these incredible words of wisdom and life lessons that encourage so many because she's beholding God yeah. in the power of his creation. And I yeah. said, come on, let's, let's, let, you know, let's, let's you and I do a tandem prophetic jump, kind of like parachuting. Hmm. And so she and I started walking through the building. It was a day we had a lot of people in the building. And, and I would kind of, I would jump first, you know, start a conversation, encourage with a couple things and say, hey, what are you seeing? Hmm. And the pictures that she was seeing were pictures of creation that she would have easily discounted as her day during her daydreaming or yeah. where she wished she were. That's cool. But when she was able to recognize how God was speaking to her, interpret with understanding what God was saying for that person, mm -hmm. and then be able to give that to them, she recognized, I hear God. Yeah. I'm a prophetic person. Yeah. I'm just wired a little differently than Jason. Yeah. Yeah, and her passions are different. Yeah. So she, so she she who understands the dandelion far more than I. Yeah. Which, you know, God gives her a picture of that for a person that she can Absolutely. easily interpret. You know, one and that's thing, the beauty of the body. Yeah. Diversity. You know, unity, a lot of times we think about unity as conformity, but unity is actually celebrated diversity. And the God who made every snowflake different yeah. made you and I so different. Yeah. You know? And one thing I read, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago on, on prophecy is that God is not human. Therefore, he does not speak only like we do. Sure. There, there, there's different languages that, you know, he doesn't speak in English. Right. So he, but he will use English, you know, if, to get our attention. So there, so to some people he may give pictures, to some people he may give phrases, to some people he may give feelings, yeah. to some people he may give thoughts, dreams, visions. Day of Pentecost is a great example. Yeah. So everybody heard the gospel in their own language. Yeah. And so one of the fruits of outpouring prophecy, because they were prophesying, 
And as they were prophesying and speaking in tongues, everybody heard the gospel in their own language. That's good. You know, I don't think it was like, okay, let's get all of this people over here and so and so is anointed. I mean, like, I just, I, I believe that the Lord, I believe even that day, and I believe even now, what we see is through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus said in John 14, 26, the helper, the Holy Spirit, will teach you all things yeah. and bring to your remembrance all things that I've said to you. And, and, one of, and, and one of the things that I love about, especially about the gathering of the saints together, mm -hmm. is when you can bring one message or have one moment where you think God is saying this, and he is saying that, but the expression of that within the hearts of those who are here, mm. this person is, is, is hearing another part of that. Yeah. And then this person, and it's a, it's a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Yeah. And I think we have to recognize that God is so much bigger than us. Yeah. And, and right now is a great opportunity to recognize that because yeah. we, we, you know, we've got an opinion, we've got a perspective. If, if everybody would just do this, we'd be all right, hallelujah. Yeah. And I believe an invitation now, whether people see, them as, see themselves as prophetic, or they just see themselves as someone who believes in Jesus, or someone hopes that things turn around pretty quickly, is to say, Holy Spirit, what am I not seeing that I need to see? Yeah. What are you saying that I'm not hearing? Mm. And then to allow him to answer that. Because a lot of times we pray prayers, we ask questions, but we don't give God time to answer. Yeah. You know, say, yeah. hey God, what? and then we just go, go back to what we were doing. Yeah. But I would even encourage those who are watching this, when this is over, this is a great opportunity to say, Holy Spirit, what do I, what am I not seeing about this? Mm -hmm. Whatever it may be, it could be current world events, it could be their marriage, it could be their business, it could be a relationship. And then what am I not hearing that you want to say? Yeah. And get out a pen, get out a paper, go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Leave this at home. Yeah. You know, because I think that I, I think that oftentimes distractions, the enemy is trying to get us to focus on us and not on him and not on them. And there's a reason these are called iPhones, hmm. because they're all about us, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And listen, something that is meant to really help us to become more effective has limited our connection, yeah. you know? And so I think that we have to, you know, recognize areas where if we self-prune, even with practical things, yeah. that we'll be able to bear more fruit in this coming season. That's so good. That's so good. Well, I think it's, uh, it's definitely a season that God wants to use to unveil a lot of things. Yes. I know it's also a season where our enemy, he has a plan, and I believe it is to distract. It is to cause the body of Christ to question yes. the Lord and everything the Lord has said about us and the season that we're mm -hmm. in. And it's the original lie in the garden. Yeah. The question that's so many right now, and it, it can take on different forms depending on the conversation that the enemy is trying to get us to enter into. But the, the 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 biggest doorway into warfare right now is has God said, will God do? Yeah. And you got to step on that stake mm. because once because when Eve began to entertain the question, mm. she became deceived. Yeah. And. I'm a big anti-isolation, anti-separation guy. You mm -hmm. know, in Hebrews it says, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together lest you be deceived. Yeah. I do recognize that a lot of families are isolating together. And so at least you have your wife to keep you accountable. Right. <laughs> you know, you know, and those kind of things. But I also recognize that in this time we have to recognize we are not called to talk to snakes in this season. That's right. We're That's not right. called to entertain the voices of doubt and unbelief when the enemy begins to say, Has God really said? Mm. Do you think he's really? You think these are really days of harvest? Mm. You know, because when you back away from that conversation, you see the divine setup. Yeah, you see how God is moving, mm. and 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 you see like you know like for instance, you see the the the, the horses and the chariots of fire yeah. that are surrounding this nation and the nations of the earth. Yeah, and so we have a choice, kind of like when Elijah said, "Choose this day whom you're going to serve." Mm. You know, and what's interesting is that choice, I believe, is what ushered in the rain. And we're in a season right now where Elijah, just like Elijah, he heard what was coming, but no one could see what he heard. Yeah. And, I, and one of the things, I, it's so important, even as prophetic people, to not just guard your heart, but also to guard your revelation. Yeah. Because out of it come the issues of life, the streams of life. And Elijah is a great example. Of course, Elisha, you know, was his protege, you know, his spiritual son. But, but I love the fact that when Elijah heard the sound, right, he heard that an end to their problem was in place. Mm. See, because... He didn't hear rain was coming. He heard the sound of rain. And so 
you don't hear the sound unless it's raining. And so the thing is, there's something had been released on his behalf and on behalf of his region and the spirit. Mm. It was just looking for one person to partner in prayer in a place of birthing. Mm. He got down on his hands and knees, put his head between his, 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 his knees and began to pray. And he told his servant to go look for the evidence, to go look and see if you can see what I hear. Yeah. And he came back and he said, there is nothing. Mm. And oftentimes, especially prophetically, when people are, whether it's new to the prophetic or their heart has grown weary and well-doing. Mm. When there is nothing at first glance, they have a choice yeah. whether or not to allow allow their heart to become more rooted in what God has said. You talked earlier about how the word suffers persecution for the sake of the word. Mm. And or you know how easily are we talked out of what God is saying? Mm. And I love the fact that Elijah told say so you got to keep looking to see what I hear. And he didn't allow what he had heard to come into question because of the absence of what others saw. And I think that one of the areas that we're being invited into a place of maturity is to be so planted in what God says, regardless of what others see. Mm. And of course, the seventh time he looked and there was a cloud the size of a man's hand. Right. Well, there's there's no way. I mean, like, first of all, you'd be like, is that... Is that a cloud? Like <laughs> rising up out of the sea. So that means it was a distance. They didn't have good, good, you know, good binoculars back then. Right. And so it would have been easy to even question the infancy of the evidence. Right. And see, I think one of the things that ushered in the downpouring, yes, it was choose to stay human to serve, that all of a sudden there was a there was this swing in the heart of the nation. Mm. I think also it was that he went all in at initial evidence. That's good. Because everything in the kingdom comes in seed before mm. it comes in fullness. Mm. And so when he saw that, he's like, that's it. It's yep. kind of like Bill Johnson. You know, Bill Johnson tells a story when they went to Bethel. And he shared this, you know, that you know, that, that they were going after revival. And mm. there was only one direction that they were going to go as a church. And if you wanted to go that direction, then you're in the right place. And, and, and just some of the challenges they had. But they had a Sunday night service where he shared and they prayed. And one lady, you know, just got whacked by the Holy Spirit and just, you know, fell out and just began to manifest the Holy Spirit. He turned to Benny and said, we have it. So in other words, they didn't need to see thousands experiencing the Lord. Yeah. They just needed to see one point of agreement in That's the good. earth. And I think the Lord is still looking for men and women who will stand in the gap. That's Ezekiel, really Ezekiel 22, 30, he sought for one to stand in the gap so the land wouldn't be destroyed. Mm. And so it's interesting. When we talk about the gap, it's really also defined as the breach. Mm. And we're called to repair the breach to restore the streets. And that begins with putting away the point of the finger and the speaking of wickedness. And I think that one of the areas of the prophetic that needs to be redeemed in this season is that we are called to lift people up, not to point people down. Mm. You know, it says to put away the point of the finger and speak of wickedness, and you would be a well-watered garden in a time of drought, a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Mm. And so when you look at the posture of the prophetic in this season, it's not pointing out faults. It's not saying they should do this and they should do that, but it's instead recognizing, okay, what does it look like to be well-watered when everyone else is dry? Mm. What does it look like to see health spring forth regardless of what sickness says? Yeah. And that is where we stand in the gap. That is where we repair the breach. That is where we say, listen, if God can find one, mm. he can change all. Yeah. You know? And not allow what looks like initial loss to be the evidence that we hold on to. Yeah. You know, even like with Bill, you know, in, in that first, this first, you know, few years of Bethel, they had a mass exodus, you know, and, you know, and, and that would have been where a lot of people were like, did we hear God? Yeah. You know, I mean, we thought we heard God, but now, you know, if it was God, wouldn't more people come and we're having more people go? Mm. And you look at what God has done with them because they remain true to the word. They remain true to the word. Yeah. And there was a season where they had to be more rooted in what God said than what they saw, mm. you know? And so I think even as a prophetic people in this season, we have to choose what filter we're going to focus on, mm. what we see with our eyes or what he has said to our hearts. Because if we will be rooted in what he says to our hearts, we will see it with our eyes. That's really good. Yeah. That's really good. Well, that's a lot to take in today. And um, I hope you guys have enjoyed those words of encouragement, also those words of challenge. I do believe with all of my heart, and I know, Jason, you believe as well, that this is a season where yeah. God is calling out people yeah. in a good way and to, to embrace the greatness that's within them. You know, he is he, he's the artist. Mm. We're the canvas, and uh, I know a lot of people, maybe even you struggle with the idea of embracing the fact that you're great, yeah. that you're beautiful, that God has an extraordinary plan for you, but but to think otherwise would be calling the artist a not-so-good artist, sure. and so he's got something great uh, upon you and within you, and so for all who may doubt that you have a prophetic calling on your life or that you can hear the word of the Lord, I really don't want you to be distracted in this season or to entertain 
what others might be saying. Just hear the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord says that he wants to use you in order to unveil his glory, not only um, in the world, but upon others as well, draw people near to him. And so... Thank you for your time today. Can I, can I say yeah, can, yeah. There's two things I want to do. One, I felt like the, it was when you were talking about that, the Lord put something in my heart just to stand in the gap for the behalf of those who are watching. Yeah. And then if we could pray. Sure. For those who are watching, for that, that spirit of prophecy we talked about to be unlocked for them. I love it. I mean, if God could do it for King Saul to be changed into another man and to prophesy, he certainly can do it for all of us under the new covenant. Amen. Amen. But um, when, I was, when, when, when Matt was talking, I was thinking back to the, the, just the point of the finger and speaking of wickedness. And oftentimes... It's not something people set out to do. Again, most warfare is just simply an attempt to get us to agree with the accuser of the brethren. And one of the things I, I one of the things <clears throat> I think about the prophetic, I think about revival. Sometimes the church, pastors, mm-hmm. leaders, is is sometimes we can inherit past experiences, yeah. people's past experiences, and um, and so, and, and I want to I want to say this: not everything that has been done or is being done in the name of the prophetic. Is prophetic. Yeah. Some of it's pathetic. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, and, and so, but what happens is we're not called to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Mm. And so for those of you who are watching, you know, as somebody who 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 believes that that you are called to be a prophetic person, that you are a son of God, you're a daughter of God, you're a man of God, you're a woman of God, I want to ask your forgiveness for any way the prophetic ministry has been manipulated in your life. In any way that that you've seen a misrepresentation in times past, whether it be something in person or on television or in the life of a family member, because there has been discouragement that has caused hearts to grow weary. It says in Galatians six nine that if our heart does not grow weary in doing good, in due season we will reap. And I want to see you reap the fullness of every seed that God has sown in you and the seeds that you've sown in others. Mm -hmm. And so, in areas where you have seen spiritual gifts used in a wrong way. You've seen ambition or agenda uh, through ministries or through churches in times past. I want to ask your forgiveness on behalf of those churches and ministries. You know, they may be gone and not able to ask you forgiveness. You may not have a relationship with them and you may not be able to, to, to give that gift to them and receive God's gift in that place. But I want to ask your forgiveness for in any, any area you've been hurt in that way. Because I believe that, I believe that sometimes when we hold on to what's happened to us, it can keep us from receiving what God wants to give to us and then we give to others. Hmm. And so that was just something I saw as you were praying for folks. That there's even the term, the prophetic and prophecy, hmm. almost had a bad connotation for some folks. Yeah. And, and God, just like revival, God, listen, there is language that God has given that at times men has misused. Yeah. But it doesn't mean we throw out the revelation. That's good. Amen. And so again, if that's you and if that speaks to your heart, I just want to encourage you to say, you know, whatever that person was, or if you just want to use me as an example, say, I, I forgive you, or I forgive that person for how they misrepresented that gift in my life. Mm. And I don't want to shut down my heart to the activation of that gift. Mm. I want to receive that gift. And I saw that what was going to happen was, was hands that were clenched were going to begin to be open. So instead of holding on to past hurts, they were going to be open for a present gift. And so, Lord, right now, I just ask, Lord, for, for present gifts of the Holy Spirit to be released, released to those who are watching right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the same way that Paul longed to come to those in Rome, that he could impart to them spiritual gifts, grace, that they'd be established, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to impart, Lord, gifts of prophecy, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, discerning of spirits. Lord, even right now that you begin to activate healing, miracles, signs, wonders, gifts of faith right now, revelation that comes through relationship in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, I just pray for infusions, infusions of your glory that would touch every heart of every person who is watching now in Jesus' name. And I declare over you, you are a prophetic person. You hear God. And God is ready for the world to hear him through you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, man. Well, thank you so much yeah. for being with us today. We thank you guys for investing time today. Yes. We know that thank God you. is going to bless you for watching this and for leaning in. And uh, and just take, take again, em- embrace all of the words that are his and uh, begin to move in the prophetic. It's yeah. something that he's called every single one of us to. Amen. Well, again, it's good to be with you today. Hope to see you really soon in person, but yes. if not in person soon, I know I'll see you digitally somehow in the next few days. God bless. Amen.